All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. You go, okay, go, okay. <laughs> 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 All right, so we want to talk to you about a serious matter. Uh, how do couples, we've talked to couples, and this is something that me and Simone have experienced ourselves right. uh, that we need to talk about. And that's how do we survive an affair? How does a marriage survive an affair when there's infidelity, when another uh, person has been introduced into a marriage? Can, can a marriage come back from that? And I can just say without going into a lot of detail that yes it can and we know that from experience our marriage survived right. uh, when when there was an affair present uh, right. and if ours survived your marriage can survive too now this is for a lot of different type of couples you may have went through an affair you may be currently going through an affair or you may be contemplating having an affair and and you know it's important to know that marriage is strong that you that if you want to you can get through this you can get through this piece there's a lot of reasons why people have an affair uh, and, and most people cling to the sexual act but I can tell you that affairs stop start way before there's a sexual act right there's certain things that take place in the marriage that that uh, uh, leads up to that right you right. know the time that you spend with another person you know, another person comforting you or you finding comfort in another person uh, rather than your spouse. Right. Um, the, the mental thoughts. The it's, right. And uh, sometimes, um, you know, people, I mean, people cheat just because they don't want to deal with reality, you know, versus being at this home and, and I can go over here to this home and I can pretend like I'm a whole nother person. I can live a whole nother life, get away from responsibility, bills, um, a lot of those things. So first of all, you know, just taking a good look at yourself and checking yourself. Why are you cheating? Yeah. And, and, and is it worth it at the end of the day? You and, know? and a lot of times, too, it's like uh, uh, one person in the marriage feels unfulfilled. Like like you're not showing me attention, that mm -hmm. you're, you're not making me feel attractive, you know, and this other person is. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's a lot of reasons why people go through that. And maybe we can deal with that sometime. But for right now... We want to help those that have been through a marriage or, or been through an, that's married, that's been through an affair. We're going to give you a couple tips and, and uh, we really want you to dialogue with us. Reach out to us. This is something that we've experienced and this is something that we've survived and overcome and have become a lot stronger because of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, so a few things to remember if you've been there, understand this. Um, I said the, the most first, the first one, the most important one is understand that you guys can survive um, going through an affair. You right. can make it. I mean, there's hope. I mean, as long as y'all. It's just hope. It's right. just hope. Yeah. Right. You right. know, it's just hope. It's like uh, you've been through it. It's traumatic. It happened. Mm -hmm. But you guys can survive. Mm -hmm. And if you survive, your marriage will be a lot stronger. Right. You have survived and your marriage will be a lot stronger. Uh, to recognize that it's going to take time to heal mm -hmm. you know a lot of times when when a person gets cut there's a scar there and and that's a, that's easy to heal because number one you recognize that you've been hurt you recognize that there's blood coming out you recognize that it's still tender you recognize that that it's going to take time to heal well when your heart has been hurt it's harder to recognize that the cut still exists, mm -hmm. that the wound is still tender, mm -hmm. and that uh, and, and it could be a year down the line where that wound, where your heart is still tender from that experience, having gone through that experience. So understand this has two that it's going to take time for you to heal from the the affair. That it's not going to heal overnight. That that you guys are going to have to work together right. to get back to that place right. and get beyond that place. Right. And, and then number uh, three is that you both have to um, take responsibility for the affair. Even though one person cheated, there was two in the marriage. Right. The, the uh, one person just didn't act alone. Mm -hmm. that, that there was some love, something that happened in the marriage that you both have to take responsibility for or else it's prone to happen again. Right. You right. know, when, when you're, why did your spouse, you know, if you, if you weren't the one that committed or involved in the affair... You got to really ask yourself, why did my spouse feel comfortable to go out and do that? 
or or what was missing that caused them to go out and do that. Right, and not saying that um, the other person deserves it because of that person maybe not doing what the other person want them to do. It just actually take owning up um, and take responsibility for yourself. Therefore, um, it protects uh, going down further down the road. You know, if I don't take ownership of, okay, I could have did this better as a wife, or I could have did this or did that. It just helps close some of those doors from being open. Yeah, and it happened. Like, there's nothing that you can do in the world to change it. It happened. So if you if you're still together, you got to say, how can we move beyond this? Right. And moving beyond this is saying, what can we do to make sure that it doesn't happen again? Right. And and so that's a two part responsibility. One, I got to make sure that there's certain things that I'm doing that I'm taking care of my responsibilities. And two, you got to make sure that you're doing certain things to take care of your responsibilities. Right. It's a re- equal responsibility to make right. sure that 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 we don't allow this to happen right. and get to this point again. And like I said before, an affair happens way before a sexual act. Right. It happens with with all of the arguing, the disconnection in the marriage, and different things that's under your control that you can take responsibility for now and not let it get to that point. Right. And number four, we want to touch on is forgiveness. Um, it's important to forgive. You know, when you do not forgive, you give that uh, you give that power over you, and therefore you're acting out of fear. Um, you're not making conscious decisions. You're back and forth. You know, because you haven't truly forgave that person. And how can we move forward if I don't f- truly forgive you? You know, um, and, and and that takes time too, and it's a process also. You know. Yeah, and it, it's uh um, and let's look at it from both sides. You have the person that committed the affair, and then you have the person that did not commit the affair. That mm-hmm. was that was mm-hmm. also a piece in there. When you when you look at at forgiveness, mm-hmm. both have to be forgiven. Right. One, the person committing the affair has to forgive themselves. They there's. You, you don't gain anything by feeling guilty. Right, Guilt right. is not gonna gonna help the situation out at all. Right. You have to forgive yourself. You have to say that, you know, I made a mistake. Right. I, I was wrong, I made a mistake, and I forgive myself for that. Um, and then on the other side of the equation, there's a, someone that, that wasn't involved with the affair that feels hurt, and they gotta forgive their spouse. They gotta recognize that my spouse made a mistake. Right. One of the reason ways that you can uh, forgive forgive your spouse when you've been hurt is by recognizing some of the flaws that you have. Right. To right. say that was I perfect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He or she may have cheated on me, but was I perfect through the relationship? Right. Did I do everything that I was supposed to do? And so you got to forgive yourself and forgive your spouse because no one can change the past. In order to move past this, we got to forgive, let it go. And let's start building together. Right. And if you choose to forgive and you choose to be with that person, you don't have to be with that person, but you choose to be with that person. So therefore, move forward with that person. And this that, that takes us to number five, which is the most important piece of surviving an affair, is you have to spend as much energy and time now not blaming each other, but spend more energy and time recovering what was lost. Right. There were some things lost through the affair. There was some trust that was lost right. that you need to spend time gaining, gaining back. There was some intimacy that was lost. There was some sex that was lost. There was some time spent together that was lost. Take the rest of your days to regain that. Right. Regain that time with each other. Right. Regain that intimacy with each other. Right. Regain that trust and, and, and confidence in each other make a plan to start recovering what you lost through the affair. So that was just a few points. Do you have um, anything to add on? Yeah, that? one more thing I want to add on. I know um, some of us are from families where, you know, that's all we know. I just, um, and I know that some people are have uh, been raised in a um, different type of home environment. You know, with loyalty means a lot. And not to excuse a person that's been raised in a home where loyalty does not mean a lot. Just understand that there's, when you've been raised in two separate homes, it takes time to understand and learn what the other person is saying. Like, if I do something, I might not even know how much I'm hurting him because to me, that's the norm. You know, just taking a minute, seeing where your, other, where your spouse is coming from and being understanding. Like, put yourself in their shoes. And, um, and you know, you guys can move forward with that. Just, you know, and that's recognizing the pro- you know, recognizing yeah, one yeah. of the symptoms, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is a long subject. We keep going on, but we're <laughs> going to have to end it. One, another thing, too, that just came to my mind is that, you know, for a lot of young couples, there's a lot of propaganda in the media 
that says it's cool to cheat, it's cool to creep, it's cool to uh, have two girls and all that stuff, that's cool. What's cool is to have one person that you remain loyal to, that you care for, that you make stronger, that you love, that and that loves you back. That's the, that's the power of marriage. Right. Two couples come together and form in one unit, walking forward, moving together as one. Right, and you might not be able to say, okay, um, I've never, um, I've always been faithful, but you can say from this day forth, I will be faithful. All you know? right. That's it. So, until the next post. <laughs>